Hong Kong 2003. An epidemic caused by a new and unknown virus plagues the former British colony, infecting 1,750 and causing 286 deaths. A virus that had a fatality rate in the city of more than 16%. We're talking, of course, about the coronavirus SARS, the rebellious but much less elusive brother of the current SARS-CoV-2. And as you can imagine, at that time, news hours were being packed with stories about SARS, SARS, and more SARS. <laughs> What no one could have imagined is that 17 years later, the city of skyscrapers par excellence was to be plagued by not one, but two new pandemics. That of the new SARS-CoV-2 and that of Xi Jinping's totalitarianism. And it is precisely this second pandemic that we're going to talk about today on Visual Politic. Although it may be surprising to us, what Hong Kong residents are most concerned about today is not COVID-19, but the intrusiveness of Beijing. It's something we've already talked about in several videos, but the situation is so specific and is progressing so fast that here we are again, and you'll see why. In 2019, Hong Kong made headlines for the numerous protests that broke out, following Beijing's attempt to impose an extradition bill, a law that would have allowed Xi Jinping's regime to bring any Hong Kong resident charged with alleged crimes to China to be tried in the Communist Party courts. Well, what is now coming at them in 2020 could be much worse. China intends to get the so-called national security law into operation as soon as possible, a law that puts issues such as extradition and Chinese interventionalism back on the table in Hong Kong's judicial system. System, a system that should supposedly operate completely freely and independently until at least 2047. In this video, we are going to tell you not only about the national security law that Xi Jinping wants to impose in Hong Kong, a law that has seen anger flare up on the streets of the city once more, but also about how China's tentacles are getting longer and longer. Will you join us on this little journey through the international clutches of the Chinese regime, kicking off in Hong Kong? Well, let's begin. Hong Kong, the last great battle. Until 2047, Hong Kong should be an autonomously administered territory with its own laws, its own judicial system, and its own social and economic norms. That, at least, was the promise. However, in 1997, some small details were still left hanging. And you will see that in the same year, the British transferred sovereignty of their former colony to China. A kind of mini constitution called the Basic Law came into force. A document to guarantee Hong Kong's freedom to govern itself and that Beijing was committed to safeguarding for at least 50 years. Everything seemed fine. However, is often the case in these situations, those who made the law set the trap. <laughs> Today, China wants to implement the national security law on the basis of Article 23 within the Hong Kong Basic Law, an article that says the following. The Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall enact laws on its own to prohibit any act of treason, secession, sedition, or subversion against the central people's government, or theft of state secrets to prohibit foreign political organization or bodies from conducting political activities in the region, and to prohibit political organization or bodies of that region from establishing ties with foreign political organizations or bodies. Article 23 of the Basic Law. As you can see, the article is basically a safeguard for the Chinese regime. It is an article that aims to prevent Hong Kong's special status from becoming a destabilizing element for China itself, or a threat to national unity. Well, the problem is that Hong Kong has never made any national security legislation. There was an attempt by Beijing in 2003 to push for the creation of this legal framework, but the mass protests that erupted stopped it. And now the issue is back on the table. Of course, at this point, you may be wondering, but why is there so much trouble if, in fact, it is something that Article 23 of the Basic Law itself says? Well, my friends, the key is in the words. The Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall enact laws on its own in this Article 23. Basically, the problem is that Beijing's new plan is about skipping that small detail. Therefore, the national security law prepared by China would be added directly to Annex 3 of the Basic Law, the annex containing the legislation of the central government of Beijing that would be applicable in the territory of Hong Kong. In other words, this national security legislation would not be proposed and approved by Hong Kong's political bodies, but would be made and imposed from above, something that clearly violates Article 23. 
or if you like, a coup. And of course, this addition, this new law would allow, among other things, for anyone Beijing regarded as a rebel, dissident, activist, or simply a political opponent to be judged directly by the courts of the Chinese regime. Courts that are not independent and that are controlled by the Communist Party of China itself. And that explains why Hong Kong streets have exploded again. Protests, riots, arrests, and even military threats this time. China's military says it is prepared to protect security in Hong Kong as protests grow. The Guardian. PLA commander says 10,000 troops are prepared to safeguard city sovereignty as Beijing warns against underestimating China. But why has Xi Jinping chosen this precise moment to put this legislation into practice? Well, no, I don't think for a moment that it's been by chance. The coronavirus pandemic may have had a lot to do with the moment chosen by the Chinese leader. And you'll see, Xi Jinping is trying to use the coronavirus pandemic as a kind of weapon to suppress protests. Protests that the Chinese government itself knew perfectly well were going to occur as soon as they announced their intentions for Hong Kong. So how are they doing this? Well, using the eight person meeting ban that is still in force in Hong Kong as a measure of social distancing to prevent the spread of the virus. A path that Carrie Lam's puppet government in Hong Kong has taken advantage of to outlaw each and every demonstration against the application of this law. In the name, of course, of public health. You see the game, the timing is almost perfect. On one hand, the threat of the coronavirus gives Chinese leaders, or rather their puppets in Hong Kong, the ability to arrest at their discretion anyone who dares to take to the streets and protest against a measure that will ultimately change Hong Kong and the lives of its inhabitants forever. Much earlier too than had previously been stipulated. On the other hand, the world is so concerned with and focused on fighting the pandemic and the economic consequences that go with it that this crisis of freedoms in Hong Kong may go largely unnoticed by the international community. And right here is when many of you will wonder, so can anything be done about it? Well, the truth is, it's complicated. Xi Jinping doesn't want to wait. He knows that he's not gonna have a better opportunity to carry out this plan to gain full control over Hong Kong. Wait 27 years? Mm, no, that's not gonna happen. However, despite everything that is happening in their own countries, some are already considering changing policies in the event that this measure is implemented. But the truth is that their ability to act is very limited. For example, the United States, with a 66 billion a year trade relationship with Hong Kong and a myriad of business interests, is the country that would be most affected by this issue. Many investments would be paralyzed and many companies would leave the city due to legal and social uncertainty, which would substantially damage the good business relationship enjoyed up until now. That's why, against this political scandal playing out in slow motion of a dictatorship like China taking control of one of the traditionally liberal places, that's why Washington has raised the tone of its threats. He said to me uh, that he's displeased with China's efforts and that it's hard to see how Hong Kong can remain a financial hub if China takes over. Big action was taken today by the Trump administration against the Communist Chinese Party. Secretary of State Pompeo notifying Congress that Hong Hong Kong is no longer autonomous and no longer warrants special treatment under U.S. law. Threats that in Beijing go in one ear and come out the other. Interestingly, the country with perhaps the most capacity to act against this action by China would be the United Kingdom. The former British Empire could undermine Beijing's ability to control Hong Kong residents if, for example, it decided to grant the status of British overseas nationals to those residents born after the colony's surrender to China in 1997. That is to say, there exists a type of second-class British nationality granted to Hong Kong residents born before 1997, which entitles them to a British passport, but not, for example, to live or work in the UK, and this could be expanded. Even so, this scenario seems very complicated, and everything indicates that we are witnessing Hong Kong's last days of freedom. Let's be honest, unless a miracle happens, we're witnessing the takeover of Hong Kong. Now, if you think Xi Jinping's authoritarian claws are limited to securing this city, you're very, very wrong. Beijing's interference abroad, both in terms of espionage and repression of dissent, has increased enormously since Xi Jinping seized supreme power in 2013. 
tentacles of Chinese influence. If there is one country in the world that fully understands what the people of Hong Kong are experiencing, that country would have to be Taiwan. This country on the island of Formosa has suffered for decades from the onslaught of the Chinese regime, which recognizes them not as a separate country, but as part of China. In recent years, and with China's growing position as the global epicenter of industrial production and economic growth, China's efforts for control have become increasingly strong. Taiwan's election thrown into turmoil after claims by alleged Chinese spy, the diplomat. Taiwan detained two Chinese executives over election influence allegations and proposed an anti-infiltration bill after confessions from Wang Liqiang. We discussed this in a recent video that we'll link for you here. China tried to influence Taiwan's January elections to prevent the current re-elected sovereign president, Tsai Ing-wen, from winning again. And yes, Wang Li Qiang was one of those in charge of manipulating results, moving around the country with a fake South Korean passport. We're talking about a former spy who served in the intelligence services of the Communist Party of China from 2014 to 2019, and who specialized in Hong Kong and Taiwan affairs. Now, after defecting, he lives in exile in Australia, and from there, he has given many details about the growing reach of China's tentacles in institutions and companies in many countries, institutions such as universities. They, pro-Chinese regime students, have infiltrated into all Hong Kongese universities, including students' associations, and other students' groups and bodies. Some of the mainland Chinese students, if they are given some petty favors and benefits and opportunities to attend some occasions, they would be willing to work for us. Wang Liqiang, alleged Chinese ex-spy. Friends, the Chinese government is rapidly learning to move like a fish in water, navigating that shadow world that involves intelligence, infiltrators, and bribes. China's reform over the past 40 years, along with its economic takeoff and openness, has had very positive effects, not only on hundreds of millions of Chinese, but for virtually everyone on Earth. It's something we've talked about many times. Unfortunately though, with Xi Jinping, a more nationalist China is gathering strength, taking backward steps regarding civil liberties. China's lack of respect for legality in Hong Kong and its attempts at political meddling in a consolidated democracy like Taiwan are good evidence of this. From the Visual Politics team, we want to show all our support to the people of Hong Kong who are struggling to hold on to their freedom. And now, now I ask you a question. How do you see China's growing authoritarian and political role? Do you think that we should worry? Or do you think that it will be temporary and not disrupt the advances that China has made in opening the country over the last four decades? Leave your answer in the comments. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Don't forget to check out our friends at the Reconsider Media podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not mine. Also, this channel is possible because of Patreon and our patrons on that platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. If you want to learn more about politics and world affairs and hear some more of my lovely voice, come check out the Reconsider podcast where we don't do the thinking for you. Find Reconsider at www.reconsidermedia.com or on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcatcher.